Hi everyone, uh, just a disclaimer before we start, this is an educational video, so whatever you do with this information is up to you, I am not liable for any law breaking that you commit. Alright guys, so recently my school um, used these kind of locks, the ABUS sort of um, three code lock combos, and um, they just this year, 2015, decided to go to just the key. So I have all these spare locker combos. Um, half of them I don't even know what the combo is because people just gave them to me. And um, I decided to make a lock pick set. So I've got my picks just there and a couple of tension wrenches. That one's quite thin, which is what we're going to be using today. And so you see a lot of videos where people make shims, which is just like out of a Coke can, just like a thin sheet of metal, and they wrap it around here and they push down, and it inside there's a pin that holds this shackle in, right? Now, when you put this shim in, it moves that pin out, which lets you take the shackle out. Now, the shims were very fragile. I mean, you'd probably have to make 10 or so just because you'd be breaking them so often, or even during picking, they would break. So um, I had play around, and I noticed that there was this keyhole on the back of them. So each one of these have a keyhole. That one's got it just there. And I had to fiddle around with my lock pick set, and I managed to pick them, which I found is far more easier than making a shim. Just because, you know, like a lock pick isn't going to break or anything. Um, there's only one extra thing that you should probably try, um, which we'll get to when we get there. So, first of all, um, what I would recommend is that you have a beginner, at least a beginner's skill in lock picking. Um, this isn't a tutorial, so you should at least know how to lock pick or how lock picking works. Um, yeah. So I'll show you the three main tools that you can use. So they're just here. Let me just get it to focus. Um, so the one on the top is called your rake. So you can use this um, if you're in a rush or you're just playing around um, really basic. Then you've got the hook in the middle. Um, I haven't really used that that much. It's more so if you're using like bigger locks. Um, yeah, um, I haven't really used that one much. And then the one on the bottom is the one that we're going to be using today, um, which is just your standard hook. Um, it's pretty basic. It's just the end with a little hook on it. <clears throat> so we're going to be using that guy today. And an al um, sorry, a tension wrench, which I've grinded out of an Allen wrench. Al Allen key, sorry. Um, so this is my normal um, Allen wrench. Uh, quite long, quite thick. Uh, but what I decided to do was I actually made another one and just made it just a little bit thinner. So get them side by side. So they're still the same length. It's just the one on the right is a little bit thinner, which is what we're going to be using today. Um, I find that it was easier to put into the keyhole without um, sort of protruding where the pins are. Um, the only issue I have is that it starts bending at the end when you actually open it, but then like once you open it, you just bend it back. I've done it probably 20 times and it hasn't snapped. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's get to it. All right, so I got a little bit better lighting and here are our tools. Now, what you want to do is um, I find it easiest to turn it upside down because the pins are on the bottom when you look at it normally and that way when <clears throat> it's actually on the locker which is like this and you flip it up um, it will be an easier orientation for you to get used to so um, what you should do first is get your lock pick your hook and put it in at the top and just slide it in as far as it goes Okay, there's one right at the back that you want to start at um, I find that that is the hardest to get. The front ones are quite easy. And you put your 
tension wrench just at the bottom. So I'll get a bit of a close up on that. You can see right there, and I just apply a bit of tension. Um, not too much that the pins won't go up, but enough that they'll stay. All right, and then you go ahead and you pick this. There's about three pins. So there's one at the back, one in the middle, and one at the very front. Um, like I said, that very back one is a real pain to get. So um, when you get these locks, they don't actually come with the key that goes in this in this keyhole, um, which I found really strange. Um, see there, you can see that it's bending. Um, and there we go. Ooh. Sometimes it does this, it turns about halfway. It doesn't it doesn't turn all the way, it turns to about about there. So we're almost there. I find just putting this in and just wriggling it on each pin a little bit more. There you go. You should be able to feel the tension wrench just move all the way. And there you have it. It's unlocked. Um, so that was quite easy. I'll show you the tension wrench. Um, it's a little bit bent. Um, but all you do is you just put it back in and you just bend it the other way. See, I found really strange that these don't actually come with the keys. I had a look on the website and I couldn't find like a key or anything. I was also told that you can actually um, go on their website and this code written up at the bottom here can get you the code. Um, but no luck. I do have an old lock, which I, this one I actually don't know what the pin is. But um, here with these ones without the letters, your second number, so the three one, so the one, and the last um, number. Uh, those two numbers make the digits of the last um, code. So for this one, the last combination code was 11. But I don't know what the first or the second one was. But um, yeah, I managed to pick this, but this one's actually really hard to actually pull out because it's so old and a pain to get back in. Um, and then these were the really old ones. So this is actually my sister's, not my own. Um, the code on the back here, again, tells you the last one, so this was 10. Uh, this, the combo for this was 0, 20, 10. So that's where that comes in. But yeah, it's got the key there. Um, I haven't... I've noticed that in each keyhole, the, um, the bottom is shaped a little bit different. Um, yeah. But other than that, you've they've all got three pins, um, so all you've got to do is just fiddle around with it. I've also um, tried with the rake, so the rake can speed up the just the first part. So what you do is you do the same as before, you slide the rake in all the way. Now with the tension wrench, you actually want to put it in flat rather than on its side. It just makes it easier to get out. You apply tension. And it's really hard to pull out, so you just wriggle it up and down. And then you're going to slowly try and get that out. It can be quite difficult. Yeah, having a thinner tension wrench would help. So I've dropped all the pins there, but yeah, you just do your rake, um, that'll get the second and the first pin, but not the last pin, not the, the first one that you do, the one at the very back, which, like I said, is a pain, um, which should be the first one that you do, it just speeds up the whole process. Once you get that last pin, the, you won't have any problems accidentally knocking the first, or the, sorry, the second or the third one just because it's all the way at the back, um, yeah. So if you guys have any tips or um, inquiries about picking locks, um, if you want to know how I made these, I did. I made um, my lock picks. I didn't buy them. I found it was much easier, much cheaper as well. Um, 
yeah, I, I, I knew how to lockpick and make them for a couple of years now, but I just never got around to it. And since my school changed locks, I just decided to um, do that. So yeah, um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.